this morning, Lord, we look back to thanksgiving in our heart and upon our lips for the risen Christ. Knowing that if he had not gotten up out of the grave, that we would all have died in our sins. We would have been most willing on our way to a devil's hell with no God on our side. But we thank you today for the risen Christ. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, knowing yes, Lord. That his love for you and his love for us. Yes. He got up out of the grave and declared that all power was in his name. Yes. We pray now, Lord God, that you would enliven our lives. Bless us with the blessing that we stand in need of. More of you and less of our sins. Yes. That we would turn our attention, our focus upon our Christ. Yes. Believe and live. Mm -hmm. That you may be glorified. Yes. Speak to our hearts today. Yes. That we may see the other need that our life is empty. Yes. That our life is nothing without mm -hmm. But that through Christ Jesus <coughs> all things are possible. Yes. We praise you today. We give you glory. Yes. We pray, Lord God, that your will may be done in our lives. We acknowledge that we're not perfect people, but you are our perfect God. We raise up and praise you for your grace, your love, and your mercy. Thank you today. We do ask all these blessings in Christ Jesus' name. For his glory. Yes, Amen. 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 I had thought earlier in the week, I said, well, Lord, we ought to serve communion. We ain't got to wait till the first Sunday of every month. We could have served communion today. That would have been glorious. Amen. Normally, and I, I remember this when I was a teenager. I wrote on the board in our church, CME, Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter. <laughs> Y'all understand what I'm talking about. I said, that's when most people come to church. Yeah. They come Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter, but not knowing. And I thought about this even this morning. I said, we got to stop saying I'm going to church and say I'm going to worship. Yeah. We got to split one. I'm going to church and say, I'm going to worship. Well, who are you going to worship? I'm going to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And exalt his name. Well, why are you going to do that? Because he died and paid the penalty for my sin. Then he got up. Without the glorious resurrection of Jesus Christ, <clears throat> you and I wouldn't have our Bibles. We wouldn't have our hymn books and our churches would be dead, filled with nothing but dead people walking. The good thing about Christ getting up is that he eventually would ascend on high and the Holy Spirit would come back and enliven our lives. When Jesus gets up out of the grave, he will spend 40 days upon the earth instructing his disciples more about his kingdom. And then, most of all, he will appear 11 times in different places with different people. And I thought earlier in the week, I said, you know, it's a funny thing about people. Even when Jesus got up out of his grave, he had some unbelieving family members. And he would stop by and he, and he, and he would let his own brother see him. His brother knew that he had been crucified because his mother was there. But he would stop by and he would talk to him. Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians, said that he was seen by over 500 people. Last of all, he was seen of me, one that was born out of due time. And so basically, he's telling you, you can't get 500 people to tell a lie. Huh? 
Right. You can't get five. You might get twelve down there at the White House. <laughs> That's a lie, but you can't get 500 that's going to lie yeah. and say, well, we saw all saw him. And so he appeared, and he kept appearing. He didn't never have to knock on the door. He would just come straight on in. That was to let you know how you're glorified, body. And since y'all just got to singing that song, that he knows your name. Yeah. When you get to heaven, now, I don't want you to think that he's going to know. He ain't going to say Mother Rosina. Mm -hmm. He got a whole other name for you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> He got a whole nother name. My name ain't gonna be William in heaven. He got a whole nother name. And see, the thing about the Lord is, if you look at the Bible, he changes people's name yeah. from Sarah to Sarah, from Abram to Abraham, from Jacob to Israel, from Simon to Peter. He's always, and that means there's been a transformation. Not that these people became perfect, but that's what the Lord does. He knows your name. And he's going to tell you what your new name is going to be. Think about that. That's a deep reference. Because, and the reason why he does that is because you didn't choose your name. Nobody in here chose their name. Their parents chose it. Well, guess what? He is the ultimate parent. And because he's the ultimate parent, I got a whole nother name for you. Mm. Your mama didn't give you this. Your daddy didn't give you this. I'm going to give you this. Yeah. Think about that. Ooh. And that's something to rejoice about. Yeah. Yes, he does know your name. Mm. Because he's going to give you a whole new name. Yeah. And you got to think about it. Now, if you have your Bibles with you this morning, and if you don't, just get beside somebody that do have one. I wanted to tell you something. We've got to learn it and get it in our spirit that the Bible is a Christ-centered book. That Christ is the center, the circumference of the entire body. There's only one hero in the Bible. And there's only one hero in the whole universe. If we had to put him on CNN, his work would be untold. His work would just go on and on and on because yeah. his works are monumental. When you read your Bible, always look for Christ. And I'm going to prove that to you this morning. If you have your Bible, turn with me to the Psalm, Psalm 30. Oftentimes, when we think about the resurrection, you know that he appeared to the women he appeared to those people on their man's road. But I think about this sometimes. I said, okay, the Bible informs us that when they looked into the grave, the clothes were fitly folded together. He had fitly, the angel had fitly folded them together and put them in the right place. I don't want you to think that Jesus was some zombie that woke up out of the grave and shook off his grave clothes. No, no, <laughs> that's not the way it works. Uh, no, he does some things that we just don't ever think about. And this psalm that we're going to read today is going to prove to you that when Jesus got up out of the grave that third day morning, he sung a song to his father, a song of thanksgiving and a song of praise. Now, I want my wife to read Psalm 30, just a few verses. This is the song that he sung. Now, over your in your Bible, in Psalm 30, it's going to say that this is the song that David sung when he was dedicating the temple. But if you understand, it might say temple or it might say his house. But if you know your Bible, you will know that David was not alive when the temple was dedicated. David only got the, the, the materials together for Solomon to build the temple. Right. But see, that's why when we read the Bible, we got to go much deeper. David was not alive even though this psalm was written by him. 
David is really talking and telling you and I about Jesus Christ, the son of David. Psalm 30, read that for me. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have lifted me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you, and you healed me. O Lord, you brought my soul up from the grave. You kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Sing praise to the Lord, you saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name, for his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for life. The weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Now in my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. Lord, by your favor, you have made my mountain stand strong. You hid your face, and I was troubled. I cried out to you, O Lord, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit if there is my blood when I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it declare your truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy on me. Lord, be my helper. You've turned for me my mourning into dancing. You put off my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness to the end that my glory may sing praise to you and not be silent. O oh Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Man, this is the song that Jesus Christ sung to God our Father when he got up out of the grave. It's a song of thanksgiving. Now, when we read the Bible, we often look, and I said this to someone the other day, if we want to prosper, we try to get all the prosperity uh, passages out of the Bible. If we want healing, we try to look up all the healing passages in the Bible. If we want to talk about marriage, we try to find all the marriage passages in the Bible. We compartmentalize so many things, and all along we miss Christ. The Bible is a Christ-centered book. Jesus Christ said this himself in John chapter 17, verse 3. And this is eternal life, that they may know thee, the only true and wise God, and him whom thou hast sent. That's eternal life. And so the only way that you can get eternal life, you can't work for it, you can't buy it, can't do any of those things. You've got to believe on the Son. You don't have anything to prove. <coughs> but we try to prove it and obtain our own righteousness. And we forget all about the righteousness of Christ. Jesus gets up on the third day morning and declares, I got all power in my hand. And he sung a song of praise to his father mm -hmm. for resurrecting him out of the grave. Mm -hmm. Oh, what a monumental morning that must have been. This is what we're going to talk about. I want to talk to you this day about the resurrection song because that's what he did. He sung a song of praise to his father. Only a few times in the Bible when you see that Jesus wept and Jesus sung a song. The Bible says that when he instituted the Lord's Supper, Communion Sunday, the Eucharist, that they sung a hymn and went on out. We're here when he gets up out of the grave. He lifts up his eyes into the heavens and he sings a song of praise to his Father. And that's what we read right here in Psalm 30. Now, I'm going to show a couple things to you this morning to show you. The first thing I want to show you is that when Jesus gets up out of the grave and he sings this song of praise, he's going to meet a couple of people and he's going to give them a Bible class. A Bible class that they needed, just like we need Bible class. No matter how long you've been going to church, how long you've been in this function or that function. you got to always continue to study the Bible because God is a God who's exhaustless. There's no ending to him because there's no beginning to him. 
He always got something he can tell you that you never knew. So he doesn't hand out the diplomas. He doesn't say, oh, well, you didn't graduate from first grade to second grade. No, you, you, you didn't graduate from high school, now you're going to college. No, he's always saying you can learn more about me. Turn with me, first of all, to Luke chapter 24, verse 27. Luke 24. Verse 27. Somebody read that. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Beginning with Moses, that took you all the way back to Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Numbers, Deuteronomy, part of Deuteronomy. Beginning with Moses, the prophets. Now, now he's going to go a little further. Look at verse 45, 46, and 47 of that same chapter. 44, 45, 46, 40, 46. Then yeah. he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled. Written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the songs. And the songs. Stop right there. <laughs> Notice he incorporated the songs. <laughs> A lot of times we're always looking for something to do. And when we do that, we miss Christ. He wants you to see him. Some characteristic, some attribute. And a lot of times we miss the beauty of the Lord. In Psalm 22, you will see the suffering of Jesus Christ out on Calvary's hill. That's called the cross song. Because it's going to give you some words that he spoke while he was out there on Calvary's hill dying for our sins. Then in Psalm 23, it's called the shepherd's song because he would say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. That's what it means when he says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He's telling you, because the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. And when you, get, and you keep going through the song, you're going to see that eventually the psalmist by the Holy Spirit will cry out unto the Lord and the Lord will take him up out of the miry pit. By the time we get to Psalm 30, Jesus has died in Psalm 22. He has showed us and told us that he is our shepherd. The shepherd will die for the sheep. But by the time we get to Psalm 30, he is resurrected. You've got to be able to see Jesus Christ. If you're reading your Bible and you don't see Jesus Christ, stop reading and go back and reread it again. He tells us this over and over again. You think you have eternal life by reading the scriptures, but they do testify they do witness, they do speak yeah. about me. Yeah. That's why a lot of people don't like reading about it. They think it's all about them, and it ain't all about them. Right. It's about Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now, one of the most precious promises that you and I have ever received is the promise of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Not only did he die for us on a hill shaped like the skull of a man's head, not only did he die for all of our badness, all of my mess, and I had a lot of it, all of your mess, and you didn't have a lot of it. 
He died for all of our sin, past, present, and future. We didn't ask him to do it, but we thank God he did do it to show us how much he loved us. He did it because that was the will of his father. And we thank God for that will. But in that precious promise of him coming, we also receive the precious promise that death will not be able to hold him. Not death nor the grave. If Jesus had just died and not got up that third day morning, you and I would have lived miserable and hopeless and sad lives. But because Jesus got up with joy, that's what Psalm 30 just told us, you and I today can have joy. Matter of fact, joy is in you, you just don't know it. You're just trying to manufacture your own joy. So you can say that you did this on your own instead of accepting the joy that Christ gives you. Yeah. Joy that Jesus gives is above happiness. Yeah. Let me say that again. Yeah. You're only happy when good things are happening. Yeah. But joy is always there. Yeah. Yeah. I tell my wife sometimes, I'm not happy, but I'm still joyful. Yeah. That you steal my wife. Mm -hmm. I'm not always happy with what you do, what you say, how you act, what you think, but I'm going to always be joyful. Mm -hmm. And we sing a song, the world didn't give it to you, yes. and the world can't take it away. Yes. And so we got to always have that, and you do have that if you've got Christ in your spirit. Mm -hmm. The problem is, we won't let Christ's joy rule our earthly happiness. Let me give you how I walk down your street. The news is always telling us Trump did this, Trump said that, Trump lied, Trump told this. And I told somebody the other day, my joy is not going to be because of President Trump. My joy I had joy even when Barack Obama was in the White House. Amen. Because why? Christ gave us his joy. Yeah. When he gets up out of the grave, he expostulates and he expires and he goes into a joyful song to his father. Matter of fact, the first verse of Psalm 30 said, I will extol thee, O Lord, for you have lifted me up. In other words, he said, I will praise thee. Yeah. The first six verses of this song has nothing to do but praise to his father. Yeah. He praised his father because even though they have laid their hands on him, that just blows my mind, that the creator allowed the creature to nail him to a cross. That the creator of the ends of the universe, he who made the star, the moon, the sun, he who made all that I see and does not see, made every human being. He allowed human beings to put their filthy hands on him and nail him to a cross. That just blows my mind. He even said, y'all ain't taking my life. I'm giving you my life. That was to show you and I, I'm still in control. I don't want y'all to think y'all can control me. Then he went even further. He said, I can call 12 legion and angels, and they'll come and get me. That was to show you and I that he has sovereign power over everything in the universe. And anybody that knows that a legion of angels that's over, that's over, that's quite a few angels. Mm -hmm. But when he said, I can call 12 legions, yeah. and they can come get you. That's a number that you and I can't even count. Mm -hmm. They'll come and get me. 
and they'll come and fight for me, and they'll come and take me back. Yeah. But as we know, he didn't call the 12 people. He allowed filthy, sinful hands to nail him on a cross because that's what it took to take our sins away. Your sins of the past, your sins of the present, your sins of the future. Some things you thought that you didn't do, some things you thought and you did do. Some things that you think you hid, but are not really hidden because he sees it all. Oftentimes I tell people that we got some sins that we really do love and we just can't get away from them because we don't allow the power of the Lord to come up through us and ask him for deliverance. I ask the Lord all the time, I said, Lord, deliver me from my secret sin. And every single one of us in here got some secret sins that don't nobody know but you and God. But you got to ask him for deliverance. Ain't no sense you trying to hide because one day he's going to hit the rewind button and say, okay, this is what I saw you do. This is the way I saw you think. Yeah. This is the way that you acted in your mind, even though you didn't do it. I told a brother the other day, I said, don't you know that on Sunday morning, most men commit adultery? He said, what you talking about? Jesus said, he said, if you look on a woman with lust in your eyes, yeah, yeah. you've already committed adultery. Mm -hmm. Huh? Notice he said a man, he didn't say a woman. Yeah, man. He could have said a woman too. But the thing about it is, he died for all of that. So that all of our sin, what I'm really telling you is, is that the Lord died for nobody to make you and I somebody. Hallelujah. Huh? Think about it. Yeah. Yeah. He gets up out of the grave that third day morning. I wish I had time to talk to you about how significant the third day morning is yeah. in the Bible. Yeah. This book here, why people will say men wrote it. We ain't that smart. <laughs> we ain't that smart to write this. You ain't gonna find no mistakes in the Bible. The mistakes is in how you read the Bible. So he gets up out of the grave. The angels are there. They gonna take the grave clothes off the mask. They gonna fold them very neatly like, and put them in their proper place. They gonna roll the stone back. Cause I don't want you to think that he had to do all that himself. No, the angel did that so that he might come out, but that they also may come in. Mm -hmm. When he came out, the first thing he did, he said, I will lift up my eyes and I will praise thee, O Lord. Now, when you read Psalm 30, it's kind of like Psalm 29, when it says, I give you glory, but I give you strength and glory. Well, wait a minute, God is already strong and he already glorious. How can you give God something he already got? What the Lord is really trying to tell you is it all depends on how you recognize. Because a lot of people attend worship Sunday morning and they just don't think that God is worthy to be praised. We're so entrenched into what our life is what our orbit is, that's a new word for the 21st century, our orbit. They're so entrenched into what their problems are that they don't see how glorious, how mighty, how powerful, how great God is. When you begin to see the greatness of God, you're going to be able to shake the grave clothes off you. You're going to be able to shake the chains that are holding you down. So when Jesus gets about the grave after paying the debt for our sins, he praises his father. I will praise thee, O Lord. Not only will I praise you, I'm going to thank you. Now when we read this, it doesn't excite us. People don't get excited about Easter like they used to. Y'all, some of you older folks, y'all know there used to be a time mama would work all week long just to save enough money to buy us an Easter outfit. Ain't that right? Y'all know that's true. Well, now we don't even think about that. I got, I already got new outfits. 
Some of us got outfits that still got the tags on we bought them a year ago. Huh? Ain't that right? We don't get excited about the risen Christ. But Paul tells us that if we don't get excited about the risen Christ, then we are people who are most miserable and we will all die in our sin. Jesus had to get up. But notice that he also says, weeping is at nighttime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus did weep while he was out there on the cross. But it wasn't because of himself. He cried out there. We just had the seven last words on Friday. He cried, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. He cried, I'm thirsty. He cried and let his word go out. But when he cried, he wasn't crying for himself. He was crying because all of humanity didn't know just how much they needed. Weeping was only for a night. You and I both know that we will weep all night long. Some of our boyfriends, some of our girlfriends, some because of children, some because of a long job, some because of sickness. We weep, but joy comes in the morning. That's what he wants us to see. I wept while I was out there on the cross. But now that it's early Sunday morning, my weeping turns into joy. But I don't know why we just don't have more joyous Christians. It seems like the Christians are going to a funeral and the unbelievers are having a party. Ain't that right? The Christians are having, you see it at ball games all the time. They jumping up and down, clapping, having a good time, got beers in their hands. They having a good time. We come to church, we got sad face on, we look bad. Oh, you just don't know what I'm going through. You got to learn to put all of that aside. The Bible says that the merry heart is the best medicine. And I said, well, how in the world can you have a merry heart when my wife won't do right, when my husband won't do right, when my children won't obey me, when the job is there? How can I have a merry heart? Well, you got to keep your eye on Jesus. Because even though he died on Friday, he gets up on Sunday morning. And that getting up was for to make you and I have a right relationship with our Father. Yeah. Notice what he says here in Psalm 30. I will praise thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. My foes can't rejoice over me. That's why I'm going to praise you. Jesus did things in the Sermon on the Mount. If somebody hits you on one cheek, give them the other. Somebody asked for one coat, give them two coats. He was telling you that the winners are not those who people try to take advantage of. The winners are those who let God have his way. Jesus let people have their way with him. They took it from judgment hall to judgment hall on Friday. Called him everything but the Son of God. They spit on him, they beat him, they mistreated him. Yeah. But on Sunday morning, he declared, I am the winner. Right. Yeah. Satan thought he had. Mm. He finally said, I got it. Yeah. I've been trying to track him for the long. Mm. I tracked him from East Garden all the way to the cross. I finally got it. Yeah. They had a party down in hell. I finally got it. But on Sunday morning, when he got up out of the grave, yeah. he declared, I got all power. Yeah. I've taken the power of the grave from the devil. I've taken the power of death from the devil. I got it all now. Yeah. It was a boxing match. And the fix was already, the fight was already fixed because God knew something that the devil didn't know. So he praises the Lord. 
first thing he does when he gets out of the grave. Then he tells you why. He said, because you wouldn't let my enemies rejoice over me. Look at verse 2. Oh, Lord, my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast what? Healed me. Look at verse 3. Oh, Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. You talking about resurrection? No, no, no. That's what he's talking about. Mm. That was to let you and I know that death is not the end for us. Mm. Huh? Right. Death ain't the end for you. Mm. Death is only a new beginning. Mm. Boy, let me walk down your street again. Mm. When you move from one house to another house, don't you go down to the post office and put in another change of address? Well, when you die, the divine postmaster mm -hmm. of the entire universe yeah. puts in a change of address mm -hmm. all the way from earth to glory. Yeah. Yeah. He put in a change of address. Yeah. You're no longer in this realm, yeah. but you're in your real realm. Yeah. You're no longer a part of the earthly tabernacle because he's given you a house that's not made with hands, yeah. that's eternal with the Father. Yeah. This is what Jesus wants us to understand. Now look at verse 6. He tells us in verse 6, and in my prosperity, how did Jesus prosper when he got up out of the grave? Mm -hmm. He prospered because without him prospering, there would not have been any prosperity for us. Well, how can a Christian have prosperity? So often when we think about prosperity, we think about monetary things. We prospered because our sins were forgiven. Our sins were washed away. We're now able to have access to the Father boldly and ask him for whatever we think we need. Yeah. And I don't think there's no greater prosperity than that. That you and I have been given access to God Almighty to come before his throne and ask him for whatever you need. God, I need a new job. Yeah. Okay, you my child. I'm going to give you a new job. Mm. God, I need you to heal me. Okay, I'm going to heal you. I'm going to do it for you. That's prosperity. We think of prosperity in monetary terms when the Lord is thinking about prosperity in spiritual terms. Yeah. I told a brother the other day, I said, what good is having a lot of money and you too sick to get up and spend it. Yeah. Huh? Ain't that right? If you too sick to get up and spend it, what good is it having a lot of money? Yeah. I said, why you on your feet, spend your money. Mm -hmm. Huh? That's right. We've got to learn that. Prosperity is with the Lord. Prosperity is not what you have. It's who you know. If you know him, you are prosperous. You just got to know how to activate that prosperity so that he might meet your needs, so that you might share with us. But notice what he said there in verse 7. He's going to tell us even more. Lord, by thy faith, thou hast made my what? My mountain what? To stand strong. Notice that he mentions the favor of the Lord before he mentions the mountain. God's favor is always greater than God's mountain. Yeah. We sing the song. Lord, don't move the mountain. Just give me strength to climb. Don't we use, we used to sing that now. We don't even think about that. We think that we can own the mountain and the strength. Yeah, There's a mountain you ain't got strength to climb. But if you got God's favor, he's going to give you strength to climb the mountain. And then he will also move the mountain. Mm. Jesus did say that if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, you can speak to a mountain, and a mountain will be moved. Now, he wasn't talking about a mass of rock. He was talking about a situation that you get yourself in. You can get yourself in such a situation, but if you've got a faith in me, you can speak to it, and it will be moved. Yeah, yeah. Well, as I get ready to leave this this morning, mm. 
not only does he praise the Lord, but he also prays. And I've come today to tell you that we need to pray a little bit more. Yes. When we pray, we can do great things. Yes. If we pray, we can do some great things for the Lord. Right. Because that's what the Lord calls us to do. Mm. Now, we can't make our will God's will. What we got to do is learn to submit to his will. Yes. Notice what he says right here as he gets ready to rip. He said, what profit is there in my blood? When I go down to the pit, then he goes down to verse 11. Thou hast what? Turn for me. Turn my mourning into rejoicing. Well, what happened? That he turned the mourning into rejoicing. He prayed. Yeah. And I'm tired of meeting folks. I've been praying. Why are you still saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to know that. If you've been praying, why are you still saying? You can't stay sad in the presence of the Lord. You don't believe you asked Mary when she came to the tomb that Sunday morning. She came there weeping. The body was not there. And, and the Lord said, uh, why are you weeping? Because they have taken away the body of my, my Lord. And he did he identify himself to her by saying, Mary. And she turned around. And turn his, her mourning into what? Rejoice. You ain't going to stay sad in the presence of the Lord. Because he can turn your sadness into rejoice. Well, as I get ready to leave this morning, early in the week I was having a sad moment. I said, Lord, everybody I love you took from me. Everybody that I hold dear, you took from me. My, my, my. And he said, well, wait a minute now. I heard you tell a lot of people that they got to learn to get past it. Mm -hmm. And so you got to learn to get past it also. My, my, my. You got to understand that I'm still here with you. Yeah. You got to understand that though they're not here with you, they are here with me. Yeah, okay. yeah. And it's better for them to be here with me than to yeah. be there with you. Yeah. He turned my morning into rejoicing. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, yes, yeah. I'm no longer sad. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh -huh. I'm no longer mourning. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah. I know you're in charge. Yeah. Yeah. Turn my mourning into rejoicing. Yeah. Yeah. Turn me into death. Yeah. Yeah. And God, God just, God just like that. If you're sad today, mm -hmm. you don't have to be sad. You just yeah. choose to be sad. Mm -hmm. Because God is a God who likes to transform people. Mm -hmm. Turn your sadness into gladness. Turn your mourning into rejoicing. When Jesus met Mary after he got up out of the grave, she might have been crying. They stole my master's body. And I don't know where they might have laid. And he said, well, wait a minute, Mary. I know all about this because I had already scripted it out. What's going on is only what I had wrote way back in eternity past. Mary, you ain't got to weep. Y'all remember that song, don't you? Mary, don't you weep no more. Mary, don't you mourn no more. Mary, I've got the Bible to break. The Bible says that when she recognized that it was Jesus, she ran to him and she would have touched him, but he said, touch me not. Go and tell my disciples to meet me. Yeah. Because I'm going to turn their sadness into gladness. They don't understand why, but I'm going to tell them why. Yeah. You ain't got to be sad today. Mm -hmm. You got a resurrection song. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of these days, they're going to sing at your, at your funeral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We always talk about celebrating. Mm -hmm. Well, what are we celebrating? Mm -hmm. We know that death is not the end. It's just a divine postmaster that put in a change of address. Yes. All the way from earth to glory. Mm. I'm changing where he lives or where she lives at now. Yes. They're no longer here with you, but they are here with me. Mama. And I thank God. Yes, we have a resurrection song. Yes. This is what Jesus saw when he got up out of the grave. Mm -hmm. Father, I gave you thanks that you didn't let this grave hold me down. I thank you that death couldn't hold me. Thank you. 
Death no longer has the sting that it once had. And the grave no longer can have the victory that it once had. My, my, my. Why? Because Jesus died and took it all from us. So that you and I might have the victory. Yeah. Don't ever think that this is the end. It's just a new beginning. Yeah. My Lord, my the doors of the church open. Yeah. A resurrection song. Yeah.